Okay, <clears throat> this has all the hallmarks of me breaking my flipping neck getting in and out of the grow room. But the um, old heater will simply lift up and go there so that I can walk in and out. So during the day it's not in use, yeah? So every time I want to do some work out here I'll have to move that heater and then remember to put it back again. Um, but as a backup heater the only problem I've got is that it will come in on its own. It won't have a, a circulating fan to help distribute the heat. But there again, it's a backup. It shouldn't really get used. And if it does, its emergency use is far more important than whether I get a few warm spots and cooler spots because I'd worry about it the next day. So at most, it would probably only be on under those circumstances over one night because the next day when I came down if the main system had failed the backup system would become the main system so I'd basically move stuff around but um, yeah it's a bit of a faff <laughs> oh. and I've, I've moved some plants around as well the Lelia Anset blooms went over so I've put that back up with the Catlias where it goes so what we've got now is backup system here which is set to come on at 12 degrees. Well, it's actually set to come on at 11.5 degrees. In other words, 0.5 of a degree lower than the set temperature. It will then bring it back up to 12 and cut off. So it'll keep my minimum from going lower than ridiculous, basically. But I can't have it setting too close to this one. Now, this one, I can't do until this evening when it gets cold um, because I need to set it right and I don't know where that's going to be. Um, given that this has got a two degree differential, in theory, when this one gets down to 19, what have I got it set to at the moment? I've forgotten. I've got it set to 19. So with a two degree differential at the moment, if it got down to 17, it would kick on and bring it back up to 19. So I'm going to move that up because this is my daytime. So I'll move that up to 20. So if it drops down to 18, it should then bring it back up to 20. That will show it's working OK during the day. And then all I've got to do is drop that temperature down. And that's what I was, that's what I was doing anyway. That's nothing new. I had a daytime setting and a nighttime setting. And this one, again, has got that large circulating fan wired into it as well. Um, so, you know, when the heater comes on, so does that. And, yeah, as I say, as we get towards the evening, I'll get all the temperatures set how I want them. As I said, when you get a new thermostat, I would suggest that the temperature gauge and reading in here is very accurate. Um, it sort of agrees with this one, give or take a degree, and this one, give or take a degree. But as this has no decimal place, I don't know at what point that will drop to 20. Could it be at the halfway point? Or could it have to wait till it gets to 20? I don't know, it's all new. Anyway, um, all wired in, all working, and uh, the sensor is up there in the roof with the other one. <laughs> that's, so it's a gaggle of sensors actually, because the black one with the holes in, that's the humidistat sensor. <laughs> and then next to that is the um, sensor for the ink bird, and next to that is the new sensor to go with the new thermostat. So it's a gaggle of sensors, and then all the wires run down the back out of the way. So, uh, yeah all okay and um, yeah I'll get the settings done and um, I'll do that during this evening so that I'm confident I can walk away from it that's the idea and um, we just got a dull day today miserable day but not cold it's actually very mild outside at the moment so uh, but uh, yeah it was a shame to use lose the Lelia Anset blooms but uh, they don't last an awful long time and it's cleared off this area a bit better now so I don't like too many plants you know this is actually a workbench I do do work on there but we should have these open soon they're pushing on nicely got their color and you know their size so they're going to be quite large blooms those will be out soon and um, we've got some cattleya buds 
pushing out of sheaths in places, so we'll have those to come in the not too distant future. I can't get at them at the moment, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And I've got an experiment that you might like the sound of. Down in there are two Miltoniopsis, not that one, these two. And if you look at them, they're almost identical. They're very, very like each other. And I think I might do an experiment. They're also in a similar growing position. They've got new growths pushing on. Um, so their next set of new growths are underway. So they're in a similar position. You can never get two plants identical. Um, but I thought I might do an experiment and carry on watering and feeding one of them along with all my other pots and take one out and double the feed. In other words, give it a very high level of feed and see what it does. Because um, the low and often, you've got people like, um, well, like First Ray. Uh, most people in the States would know First Ray. If you have a look at his feeding regime, he bases all of his feed on parts per million of nitrogen. Now, he's got charts and everything based on spoonfuls and gallons and stuff like that. God, that plane's noisy. Um, well, they don't work for me, I'm afraid. <laughs> First of all, a gallon in the States is not a proper gallon. It's a made-up one. Should be eight pints, but it's not, unless you've got a dodgy pint in the first place. So they're not proper gallons, as far as I'm concerned. And um, I work in litres, yeah? So it's, a, it's I'm forever converting stuff. Plus, I don't mix up a gallon of feed. I don't want a gallon of feed. I want the amount of feed to go in the water that I'm currently going to use because I don't like wasting it and I don't like storing it yeah so none of that stuff works for me so um, but basically to work out parts per million of nitrogen you've got to look at the um, the percentage you know so it's 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 weird if you've got if you've just put some MSU feed into some water and you measure the TDS and it says 100 parts per million and the nitrogen is 11% of that, yeah? You've got 11 parts per million of nitrogen as far as I'm concerned, yeah? Well, he bases a lot of his stuff on parts per million of nitrogen per week. Well, what if you're only feeding every eight or nine days? You see what I'm getting at? It, it, it's never an exact science. But um, to his recommended thing at one point, when, when I did some work on it, was 25 parts per million of nitrogen in the feed. Yeah? So you've got to do a calculation. <laughs> what would be the TDS value? You, if it, you remember what I've just said? If the TDS was 100, that's 11% nitrogen. That's 11 parts per million. Well, if you wanted 25 parts per million, you've got to work out the percentage ratios and bump up your overall parts per million by that amount. And it's more than double. So we're going to be a fair way above a TDS of 200 parts per million, which is higher than I normally feed. Yeah? But this is his red recommended chuck it on everything type feed, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Because I'm sure if you've got a big nursery, you don't go around some of that for you, some of that for you, but you're not having that. You've got to have this one over here. So some of that for you. Uh, don't give me that. They, they knock up some feed and chuck it on everything. <laughs> uh, I've got time to muck about like that. So, um, yes, yeah, so I thought I'd carry on feeding and watering one as normal, but the other one would get twice as much. So whereas I'm, you know, going around at sort of um, whatever, 150 to 180, yeah, well, let's let's get up nearer to 300 for one of them. As I said, I, I know a guy feeds at, um, you know, more like 400. And he doesn't kill all his plants. But don't forget they need to be growing actively to be, to be even thinking about this sort of thing. And they are. So it's an experiment to come, yeah? Two plants, similar, can't say they're the same because they're not, but they are both Miltonias and they are very closely related. One being the um, uh, Moreliana and one being the Spectabili. 
Spectabilis, one of the two. Anyway, they are very close in, in their growth patterns, their size, everything. They're very, very similar. Bearing in mind, the more Moreliana used to be variety Moreliana of the same species. Yeah, this recently been renamed. So they are very close. Two plants, very similar, and then we'll see if bumping up the feed a lot gives me a bigger, stronger, healthier plant. And this will, in my mind, settle me down to saying that either my feed low and often is underfeeding my plants, or that it's fine. And the, re the results of doubling up the feed are not, not worth doing, if you see what I mean. The difference in the plants is hardly noticeable. So you're wasting your feed, if you see what I mean. So we'll give that a go. It'll be something to look forward to. Um, I'll set that up as a sort of um, start-up video. Um, and it'll be like a little mini project, because neither of those two plants are in the 2021 project plants. They're just here. <laughs> you know, they're just in amongst the plants. And we'll give that a go. Keep them in the same conditions, you know, same light and everything like that. And um, you'll obviously get the same temperatures, <laughs> same humidity, but, um, you know, keep them on in an identical sort of light position so that that can't be too much of a variable. And then we'll see what results we get by the end of the season. We can keep our eye on those quite closely. You know, do the, are the bulbs bigger on the one that's getting fed more or are they the same? Do they put up two spikes instead of one? All those little differences, we'll see what we get as a result of bumping up the feed to a much higher level. They'll still get flushed at the same time, yeah? So once we get into the growing season, they're probably going to get fed twice, flushed once, maybe even fed three times, flushed once, yeah? But I'll set that up as a little mini project and we'll see how we go. I don't know what you think about that. Would that be interesting? But um, it's, in, it's interesting to me, so I'm doing it anyway. You can, you can follow it along with me or not, please yourselves. But I'm going to do it anyway and I think it could be of interest to uh, a lot of people. It's, there's too much worrying about feeding and watering, but um, an amount of worry is good stuff, you know. And, 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 and an amount of knowledge is good stuff. You don't need to be a flipping scientist to feed orchids. <laughs> Whereas the way some people talk about it, you would think you did need to be a scientist to feed your plants. No, you don't. <laughs> Keep it simple. Anyway, I will see you next time. At least my kit's sort of uh, up and running now. And um, a lot of people commented that that is such a nice unit, they'd have it in their lounge. Well, why not? It's actually a nice looking unit. <laughs> you know, if you were waiting for your central heating to be fitted and your house was cold, that would do the job. I don't think it would do a huge room, you know, but um, certainly plenty big enough for in here. Right, I will see you next time. All set up. Um, I, I decided to do them a bit neater and sort of, you know, <laughs> the wires aren't neat. My wiring's never neat. I mean, I've managed to get one wire each side of this one. <laughs> it's a bit of a nuisance. And to get this out I've got to unplug it and it's plugged in up there and it's threaded all in nah they can stay as they are <laughs> I don't need to be that tidy if I was really tidy then all of the wiring would be behind sheaths you know behind behind that strip stuff so that you couldn't even see it but uh, far too much faffing and what about when you change your mind and you want to do you want to move something now I like everything Tidy but reasonably loose and v flexible. So if I change my mind, I can just move stuff without ripping the place to pieces. See you next time. Bye for now.